Hello everyone, welcome to your mid-month tarot reading. So this is going to run roughly from June 15th to June 30th. And I apologize for the delay in getting this out to you. Um, I had a lot of things to take care of and I was traveling as well this past week. So um, I know it's uh, going to be published a day late, but I apologize ahead of time. So without further ado, let's go into the signs. So once again, if you're familiar with the mid-month reading, it's going to start off with the traditional zodiac wheel. We are starting out with Aries and ending in Pisces, okay? And you can look below for the timestamp so that you can fast forward to your sign. So first off, we are going here with Aries. And just give me a moment like usual. I need to shuffle out the cards. So bear with me, Aries. Okay, so Aries, um, what I'm feeling though is um, at the center of this spread here, we do have a lot of disruption and this is possibly possibly indicative of, of an argument that could potentially happen as well within your household. I do feel for those of you who are, who are homeowners or who tend to live in like um, a high rise apartment, I do see some repairs, some potentially some home repairs that needs to be taken into account, okay? But I do feel that those people around you, this is like friendly neighbors, um, even family members, friends, loved ones that are around you in your midst that will be able to help you through these circumstances. So I'm feeling some type of a, um, a home situation, some type of a I want to say like tragedy that brings the community together. That's what I'm sensing in your mist. What I'm feeling as well is the message very strongly that it takes a village. It's kind of like that whole mentality about every man for himself. That's not going to be conducive for stability, rebuilding, reconstruction for this month. Okay. For others of you, it could play out in a situation where there is a falling out between you and another person and both parties are coming together for, for a reconciliation. So I do feel, you know, letting bygones be bygones, letting water, you know, pass under the bridge. And I, I feel to people coming together. There's this great sense of community and there's also a great sense of reconciliation and things like that for those of you where this pertains to a relationship for others of you what I do sense is um, there's a, a almost like a voyage back to a previous situation so it seems to me that a lot of you are on a forward movement uh, type of a trajectory I see something catastrophic standing in your way you averted it. I feel like it's not going to impact you directly, but it is something that is in your way. And as a result of it, it's blocking your progress, it's barring your way. And you have to like move from then to go back into a previous situation. Uh, what I do feel once again is that sense of camaraderie, that sense of like um, people in your environment offering a lot of emotional support. So if you are inundated with a lot of uh, things, troublesome energy, or even just, you know, a very, very busy energy, I would strongly urge you to reach out because those around you, they are definitely receptive towards um, your plight and they do want to help you, okay? Um, I do feel for, especially if you identify as an Aries female, uh, financial situation might be a little bit lacking for the next two weeks. I, I am sensing there might be, you know, some home repairs is what's coming in very, very strongly. There might be friends and family, um, fa family members more than anything um, asking for financial assistance. Um, for Aries female, I do feel there is a very strong figure. This is showing up as a water sign a water sign figure, someone who's very emotionally supportive and nurturing and caring. Um, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio seems to be a little bit older than you that is helping you. Um, they tell you they're going to be there if you need them. So I feel like in any capacity that comes out as this is a very warm and loving person and I do feel they can help you greatly in moving forward, okay? For others of you dealing, for Aries in general, dealing with a um, 
an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. What I do sense is this is a deep-rooted friendship. It's a deep-rooted love relationship where I feel like you and the other person care about each other on a truly human level. And um, it's hard for you to... I feel like there might be some differences in the way that you communicate, in the ways that you both express yourselves. But I do sense that um, you're re-examining this this union with this person and you're trying to figure out if it's worth all the trouble because it seems like there's a huge burden whenever de you're dealing with this person okay but you know that they're there for you so a lot of people are showing up in this spread and they are there to help you move along as well I do feel some discord some argument that might have happened with an an air sign Aquarius Gemini and Libra and I definitely feel it is within your control to um, reach out to this person. This person, for some reason, feels as if you're very much like alone in your struggle. You don't want to delegate responsibility. You don't want to um, share your burden. It feels to me as if there are people around you, but you want to forge ahead and you want to do it yourself. So going back to the initial message that I got, it takes a village, okay? It, it takes like cooperation. It takes collaboration. So this is not, for the next two weeks, it's not the the time for you to go it alone because I feel that it's going to bring you more troubles down the line as well other people want to help you so you know let them in because they can give you very good insights as well as assistance all right so wish you all the best Aries um, enjoy the rest of your June 2016 so we are moving on to the next sign let me get the card shuffled out so next is Taurus. All right, Taurus. So one of the main messages that I'm sensing here is um, I do feel a lot of you are uh, either in the, the planning stages for a trip to see a significant other or someone is... Um, I feel that you're communicating with someone and there's talks about travel, there's talks about movement, there's talks about one person coming to see somebody else. It could be from them to you. Or you to them, I feel like um, there there's this uh, geographical distance between you and a significant person. For those of you who are dealing with a water sign, so this is Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, this person have got their eyes on you and they really, really are very much smitten by you. So I feel like the, the feelings, the emotional connection and the rapport is definitely strong and it's definitely sincere and real. I do feel this is a very, very good person. They have a very good heart and they are genuine when it comes to you know putting in joint effort to come see you so from the beginning if you're dealing with this person and um, a lot of it is just them soliciting you to come see them you might not feel like it's uh, one you feel like it's just very one-sided but I do feel that it takes them some some time to open up and because you're an earth sign and one of the most practical signs in the zodiac you want to like um, gauge if it's going to be more I guess like uh, reciprocal from both ends before you jump head first but I do feel you know it, it will get to be that way and also bring this up as a discussion topic as well because I do feel this person is sincere they're just a little bit wrapped up in their own mind so they might seem at times to be you know like um, I don't feel they're insensitive it's just um, there might be constraints on their end so they're not taking the initiative but I definitely feel that um, the feelings are being reciprocated, okay? They, they seem to me to be a little bit shy, so that's, that might be why they might not initiate a lot. 
what I'm sensing as well is uh, for others of you who are in committed relationships, I feel for a lot of you uh, in committed relationships, there in the past there might have been like just a lot of passion, a lot of um, chemistry between you and your partner and I feel this is the month in which you're starting to realize you know how can we reintroduce the passion the chemistry back into the relationship how can we reinject fun and excitement back into the relationship so you feel like if it's a long-standing relationship or even if it's a stable relationship there is almost like a sense of adventurousness um, within you where you want to seek something new I don't feel you're tempted to step out of the relationship at all I don't sense that but I do feel that there is um, almost like warmth and that emotional connection that needs to be reestablished for those of you who have the same partner and you're starting to feel a little bit like uh, things are kind of flatlining it is really important for you to do that and particularly if you are with a uh, fire sign Sagittarius, Leo, and um, Aries. I do feel you or the other person traveling quite a bit and you might not adequately make time for one another or just seeing one another, coordinating when to meet up, it might be a little bit challenging. So that's another issue here. But I definitely feel relationships that are starting this month or for the next two weeks and relationships that are solid right now are very, very stable. It indicates to me something potentially panning out to marriage material you're meeting very very like-minded people and it seems to be a very good month to solidify the things in your life right now because um, they're very good for you the people that are currently in your life they are the ones that are meant to be in your on your karmic path and because of it, it is really important, you know, not to stretch yourself thin and really appreciate and to acknowledge those around you that are right in your midst right now and try to work at and repair and, you know, nurture those relationships, okay? Um, for those thinking about traveling, I do feel there is a need to really get away. I, I feel like with the house situation, a lot of you are feeling a little bit of a stagnation in your living environment and you want to break out a little bit. And I do sense that financial uh, abundance and in terms of like, you know, calculating how much you would need in order to make a trip happen or if you're thinking about moving home. There's also that um, financial considerations in the picture. I do feel you have more than enough. And, you know, you always want more. And I feel like um, it, it gives you stability. It gives you peace of mind. But I do feel you have more than enough to implement a, a move in your life and to also find something else. A lot of you are in the process of looking for a new house. If it hasn't come in already, it's telling me that in about... Um, I feel like in about four months time would be a better time for you to get a, a property. So we are in June right now. So that's going to bring us towards like the middle towards the end of October. I feel that's a very, very good time to get that dream house that you're looking for. Give me one second. I'm going to wait for that helicopter to pass by. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's my first time recording it outside and um, there's a lot of noise and a lot of helicopters for some reason. So I feel like October would be a good time to uh, get a house. I do feel a lot of you um, relationships being taken to the next level, which means, you know, you're reaching important milestones in relationships, either buying a property together, getting engaged, getting married, um, proposing to someone or just, you know, um, agreeing to date someone exclusively. So there's this whole process of taking things to the next level and it seems to be to be very, very positive. And um, I feel there's a lot of reciprocity when it comes to love relationships and things like that. For others of you who are dealing specifically with a fire sign, I do feel a lot of uh, problems are being laid to rest. You both are now coming together and working together harmoniously and smoothly as a unit. And I feel like in the past, this relationship was very um, burdensome because of 
differences in opinion, but I do feel moving forward, there's a lot more harmony to be established as well. So you're letting old, away, you're letting go of old ways of relating or interacting with one another that might not be conducive for a harmonious relationship. And as a result of it, you both are able to move forward and take things to the next level. Um, for those juggling fire signs and water signs, be very, very careful because I do feel that um, in the process of doing that, you might lose out on a very, very good person. Okay, so one person might um, be out of the picture or you might consider, you know, leaving one person for the next. I feel like shifting from fire sign to a water sign is highly indicative. And I feel that if you're juggling, it would be best for you to try to decide something possibly by the 24th or so, by the 24th. I feel like that towards the very end, that third week, and towards the 24th, okay? Make up your mind and decide on something, all right? So I wish you the best, Taurus. And now, on to Gemini. So Gemini, give me a moment. I'm going to shuffle the cards. So I hope you've all had a good time celebrating your birthday, and happy birthday to those um, that are born towards the 15th on for June. What's in store for Gemini? All right, so first message out here. Um, there is somebody in your life, and this is like, um, it can be either a friend or a romantic partner. And I feel there is this great sense of uh, a very strong emotional connection. You feel almost like this person is your soulmate. You feel almost like um, you're meant to be together, okay? There's this sense of deep-rooted care, understanding, love on a human level between you and another person. And I feel like, I feel like there are people around you disapproving of this relationship. That's what I'm sensing. So there's, you know how you feel, but other people are not in your shoes. And these people that are around you are actually, um, you know, in your close inner circle and they're telling you, they're telling you, no, this is not a good person for you. You might want to think twice before you rush in. And there's a sense of disapproval. So, you know, being a dual sign, you are represented by the twins. I feel like a lot of the times you give too much credit to other people and you, um, you are afraid of like, you know, kicking up the waves and, and causing waves and, and, you know, doing things that other people disapprove of. So the point here is that they're not living your life and they're also not in the position that you're in. So maybe the advice that they give you, even though it's well-intentioned, it might not be appropriate for, for your situation. So this is, um, the next two weeks is a, a time where you have to really think about more than anything, um, what is appropriate for you and what it is that your heart is guiding you, you towards because listening to other people or not doing things out of fear of reprisal or being ostracized by groups is not going to do you any good, okay? So be mindful about that. On the other hand, I feel that others of you, um, I'm feeling this very strongly and you might want to be a little bit careful. For those of you knowingly dating somebody who is in a relationship, or who is married, just be very mindful about this energy. I do see gossip. I do see like things spilling out, like things hidden in the darkness coming to light. So be very mindful about getting caught or even like finding out some information about the other person. I do feel that 
whatever that is coming through for the next two weeks is meant to happen, okay? Because there's this overwhelming sense of karma um, coming back in. And if that's from your end, if that's from their end, it's being brought to light so that you both can clear up this karma, so that you both can decide if it's even worth it or if it's something that can be salvaged, all right? So I do sense this overwhelming sense of karma coming out and things are revealed as they should be so that you are once again going to have to decide once and for all what you want to do. Um, I do feel that for those of you who are involved with a uh, an earth sign, so this is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising, I'm sensing this is more like, it, it could be their moon or their rising more than their sun sign, because I'm feeling this is like, in your eyes, somebody who is almost like, you know, they're like the, the Mr. or Mrs. Perfect in your book. So you're kind of blinded by it and other people are giving you, you know, advice as to not get involved. They're, they're chiming in and you have it in your mind that, you know, this person is already everything that you're looking for. So you're not going to really um, pay too much attention to what outsiders are saying, which is fine. Just be logical and practical, okay? On the home front, I see a lot of home moves. I've done it for three signs already and you're the third. And I'm, I'm starting to see a lot of home move, a lot of shifts in the housing environment. People moving in, people moving out possibly even repairs that need to happen. For those of you who have recently moved into a new house, there might be a few things within the house that are um, kind of a burden. So for example, you know, some houses are designed very well and they're, they're designed for efficiency. Um, this house, it seems to me like it was put together. It wasn't well thought out. It wasn't well planned out. So there are a few things in there that just don't really make sense and it interrupts with, uh, it interferes with efficiency navigation and efficiency is what I'm seeing. This can also play out in the office environment where there are a lot of inefficient protocols or things put into place that really, um, that might, you know, interfere with workflow and streamlining of work processes. So these are things coming through. Um, there's a new project brought to you by somebody and I feel like this person is offering you an opportunity either to work for them or to work with them. So I feel a new project. I do feel that it is a, in your best interest to take up this project because I feel that it's going to pan out very, very well. Um, what I'm also feeling as well is, uh, is at the beginning of the month, I feel that a lot of you are, um, I, I, I'm sensing almost like a self-esteem situation, okay? And I feel like this self-esteem situation is not something that happened recently. I, I feel a, a dip in your self-esteem. And I don't feel it's something that's recent. I feel like this is more of a childhood conditioning where we might grow up in an environment where people tell us, oh, you can't do that. You will never be able to succeed. So there's a lot of naysayers in your childhood home environment. And it's... um. Because of it, it has affected your self-esteem. And I feel like you need, um, you know, constant reassurance or you need validation from other people in order to, because you, you're not trusting in yourself enough, okay? Um, so that's coming in the beginning, I, either the beginning of the month or towards the 15th of June. So I do feel there's a lot of hesitation, trepidation, and just, you know, this um, uncertainty about moving forward with something, mainly because you're not sure and mainly because it's a self-esteem issue. It, it might have been something that triggers something from your past that brings up these issues surrounding confidence and, you know, our ability to know what we're doing. So I feel like you're questioning yourself a lot um, for the, that first week. And then towards the end of the uh, month, there are other responsibilities that are catching on. New projects coming into the picture, financial stability, things are starting to stabilize themselves. And I do feel new projects coming through that are very good for you. So if you're worried about your finances, I do feel like um, kind of like, you know, something breaking through that would be very good for you towards the end of this month, okay? So Gemini, a little bit of a heavy, like it, it seems to me like more of an emotional two weeks. 
I do see a lot of cups energy and the, the way they fall out. I do feel like arguments, discord and things like that. Leaving behind old group associations because you don't want to deal with the gossip, the, the drama and also that childlike energies or you don't want to be in a place where people constantly put you down. So I feel like you're putting your foot down and you are kind of closing some doors on some people. All right. So overall, I would say it is a very good energy. Um, I wish you the best and have a wonderful time for your birthday as well. Um, be careful about drinking and, you know, saying things like, um, I always say, no matter what, don't drink when you're upset. I feel like a lot of um, things can be misconstrued or can be said at the wrong time. But I just... Just whatever you do, try not to get into drinking situations or overwhelm yourself with alcohol when you are upset or when you're sad. Those are not good times to be drinking. All right, so next up we have Cancer. So let me shuffle the cards before I switch over to the other side. Cancer. June 15th to June 30th. Okay, Cancers, um, before we start, I just want to wish you a very happy birthday for those of you whose birthday is um, in the later part of June. Um, one thing that is coming out very, very strongly to me, and I, I can't say it any other way, I feel like you're headed the wrong way. You're heading towards the wrong way, flirting with disaster, doing something that is not good for you, and I do sense that um, it's, lead, it's going to lead to regrets in like two months time okay we do have the knight of cups and the tower so you're headed towards that way and um, you might want to you know do some auto correction if you need to in order to guide you back on the right path so I feel like um, something is being implemented here and it, it, you definitely can avert this okay you definitely can avert this so let me just uh, try to flush this out. What I'm feeling here is that they're saying you're headed down the wrong um, down the wrong path, and you're going to notice some some major major regrets and you know some some sense of like a um, crisis coming through in two months time. Um, at the center of this spread here is the Ace of Rods in the reverse position. The Ace of Rods in the reverse is, um, well, the Ace of Rods in general, it indicates new projects, passion, um, like the, the ambition and drive. When it's in the reverse position, it basically means like taking the easy route, not um, being complacent and not going, implementing things and, you know, fighting for things that you really, really enjoy and that stir your passion. So it's kind of like the trade-off between taking the easy route, easy way out rather than fighting for something that you feel is worth more to you on an emotional or even on a uh, material level. So there's something here, strong warning that you're headed down the wrong path. And I feel like I feel like uh, one relationship is coming to an end as a result of it. And it's kind of irreversible, whatever happens. I feel like you know about this and you know that it's gonna put an end to something, but you're okay with that, w with it. So as long as you're cognizant of the fact that something is going to be irreversibly weaned or taken out of your life, then that's fine. But I do feel there's some something about flirting with disaster here, doing the same things over and over and over again and expecting different results. So if that's the track you're on, you know, try to redirect yourself towards a better outcome. Um, what I'm feeling here is there is a, a person here. Um, I see like darker skin, quite exotic. Um, 
someone who is very financially well off, someone who is quite seductive. Um, I feel like you've been dealing with this person for quite some time. They seem to be to be like, there's a sense of magic about them. There's a sense of like, um, I see a lot of purple, and that always indicates to me someone who is very very spiritual, who could potentially be you know like psychic as well. Someone who's highly, highly evolved. And I feel like you might have been dealing with this person. And I feel like there's some fear associated with you and, and this person. It's almost like you're a water sign. You're very susceptible to psychic attacks and, and uh, energy like interference. So this person makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable. And there's this sense of um, um, almost like... I would say like it, it does unsettle you. So you're shifting away from that. And I do feel as well, be very mindful about pursuing love relationships out of sheer convenience, okay? Be, be mindful about that. Everyone wants a, um, a union that is easy to come by, that is stable, that is, um, I guess like with a ready framework. Okay, everyone wants the easy route, and I do feel that um, one of the challenges for you for this month is to not take the easy route. I feel like it's, it's better for you to take a risk. I, I feel like you're operating from a place of fear. You're trying to figure out the certain thing to do, the, the thing that will yield the reward that you're looking for, and because of what that, you're shying from the risk. And I feel that the risk will actually bring a lot of a reward. So whatever it is, if you have two options, and one of them seem to be very simple, very easy, and stable, and then the other one is something that really stirs your passion, but at the same time, it seems like it's so hard. It seems like I don't know how to get this together. I do sense that uh, taking the risk would be a better choice for you because it will shake you uh, from your complacency and it will offer you a new, a new, new opportunities as well as you know, new a new world that will open up for you. Going back to the um, June reading, the the monthly reading. I mentioned uh, as well that sometimes we want something really badly and when we, it actually comes into our lives and we think about, well, I want it, but I don't know how it's going to work out long term. Well, it's actually not our place as people, as humans to, you know, question about longevity, to question about what things are going to look like a few years, a few months down the line, because that's not up to us okay we're supposed to just go with new opportunities as they come in and then plan things out it's it's almost like cross that bridge when you get there okay so i i feel that that's going to be better for you don't overanalyze don't overthink it cross that bridge when you get there and that's going to alleviate or relieve a lot of pressure from you to like you know plan things out methodically um I feel like at this point in your life, you're looking for a lot of stability. You're looking for, you know, um, that kindred spirit. I feel like there's that, that sense of kindred spirit. But I do feel one sacrifice has to be made to achieve that sacred union with another person. So I don't know what that means to you, if that makes sense to you. But I'm feeling this is like a channel message specifically for somebody. A sacrifice needs to be made in order to achieve that kindred spirit and whatever sacrifice you you're thinking about making and whoever it is that you're choosing to be with I feel like you're choosing between two things that are very very different on the one hand we do have the lovers card which is you know like um, it's physical chemistry and it's a difficult relationship because two people are very very opposite and, and you know dissimilar in manner in nature in their outlook in their lifestyle on the other hand, we do have the Ten of Cups, which is the Harmony card. So there's like a lot of conflicting messages coming through. And I feel like you have to decide what you want to do. I feel like on the one hand, the universe wants you to take a risk. It wants you to take a risk. And this is not about, um, you know, these are calculated risks. It, it wants you to explore. It wants you to like not be a cop out and not take the easy route out and this is in work and in business and also in romantic relationships but on the other hand it seems like you're torn between two things one thing is very very certain and the other thing is very um, physically gratifying 
So whatever that means to you, I feel like one thing has to be sacrificed in order to achieve the other. You can't have it both ways, okay? Let me see if there's anything else that I'm sensing. Um, I see somebody giving you advice, and I feel you turning away from this advice. And you're going to go with whatever your heart desires. But I feel that your desires, just make sure that your desires are in alignment if, if you're like desiring somebody if you're trying to link up with somebody just make sure you're both on the same page and that you don't end up hurting the other person because i feel like that might be what's in store here i do feel like an empty victory when it comes to you know wanting your cake and eat it too and being a little bit too um i guess like too self-involved with what you need and what you want and not taking what the other person wants into account and being considerate as to their needs and their wants so be mindful about that so i hope the messages helps um, make sense to you cancer what i do feel coming through is it says um, here take a risk and you know stop doing things the same things over and over and over and over again if you've done that and you've ended up like empty-handed this is a month for you to re-examine those past decisions see if there's a recurring pattern recurring theme and try to do things a little bit differently okay don't be afraid to take risks all right so wish you the best cancers so next up here we have leos okay so let me shuffle the cards Okay, so Leos, um, I've got actually got a very, very interesting spread um, from, so the one of the main message that I'm getting out here is temptation, okay, and this is um, mainly on a love relationship level, and it pertains specifically, I, I feel more of a masculine energy coming through, but I feel like, you know, the, the general readings are rarely, they're not gender specific. I just feel like we have two queens here and one king, so it leads me to believe that this might be, you know, geared towards more of the self-identified Leo males. And I've been seeing this a lot, actually, for Leo, so let's just go through it. Um, the first thing that I'm sensing here is uh, there is temptation. There is some temptation. Um, you might be involved with someone and you're kind of... Um, soliciting or you're being tempted by someone who is already in a relationship so either way I three I see like a three threesome type of a situation you might have someone already you're soliciting somebody else or you might be single soliciting somebody in a couple relationship and you want to be mindful about that because I feel some information leaking through and communication coming through in a way to the person that it wasn't intended okay so for example if you are seeing two people you might text one person and accidentally deliver it to the next and i know this feels like more of something that was prone to happen during mercury and retrograde but i do feel that we are shifting towards um, the sign of cancer and which is a different element like the opposite element from yours so you want to be mindful about communication and make sure when you press that submit or send button, the recipient is exactly who it is that you the, the message is intended for. Okay, so be mindful about that communication coming through to the wrong person. Um, what I'm feeling as well is for others of you, there is, um, and especially more for like self-identified Leo females who are dealing with especially a water sign, 
uh, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. I do feel that um, this person is taking an interest in you. It, it, they're almost like sending you a message, you know, do you like me? But they are very respectful of your space. So they're not overly, you know, aggressive. They're not uh, the one in pursuit. And I feel like in the past, you might have been dealing with somebody, with people like partners who have been quite aggressive and assertive and you always knew where you stood with them but I feel like this person is a, a lot more respectful they're very gentle they have a really good energy aura about them I feel like it's um a water sign Pisces Cancer Scorpio very caring nurturing and all of that and I, I do sense that they are taking a step back because they don't really want to overwhelm you but they have proven once and uh, over and over again that they are interested so I feel like if that's the case that you're dealing with you definitely can reconnect and you know have some type of a fruitful and stable relationship as well um, I do sense that a lot of you feel almost as if your hands are tied it, it seems like a lot of you feel as if well this person is kind of lazy they're not really putting in the effort but I do feel that they're just not aggressive the way that you you aggressive like the people you're used to in the past but um, I definitely it, it either way it takes two each person needs to you, you know come and, and meet in the middle ground in order to get things off the ground so it's important for you to identify that maybe this person is just shy and that's why they're not able to be as aggressive in the pursuit of you okay um, what I'm also feeling as well is there is going to be for those of you who are dating and who are in stable relationship there's going to be a lot of um, opportunities for travel either talks about travel planning some type of travel that might not happen this month but you know further down the line I do feel things are being very uh, things are being reciprocal things are being very balanced out so if you're dealing with someone and they, they seem to be like a little bit distant I feel like they're putting more effort into communicating with you planning things out putting in an effort to maintain a relationship okay the financial situation I do want you to keep a rein on it I feel like some people might come in and ask for financial assistance or asking for help and at the end of the month there's this overwhelming like extravagant energy you might be um, attending a lot of celebrations you might be going on a lot out a lot spending a lot of money is what I'm feeling so the financial situation might start to uh, dwindle or it might be a cause for concern towards the end of this month so ration things out and, and budget um, what I'm feeling as well, there is a work situation. If you feel in previous weeks or months prior to this reading, if you feel some projects, some situations are kind of being stalled, or if you feel like in a social circle that you don't feel like you're being included by other people, I do feel that energy lifting, and I do feel that you're going to group association and things like that will start to open themselves up people will start to open themselves up and there there's a sense of like uh, being included in a group being brought into the fold amongst other people if they have been distancing themselves they will start to open themselves up and I feel like there's a lot of reciprocity happening where people's um, energies are kind of like a mirror a reflection of one another and if one side starts to open up and to ease up the other side likewise will ease up okay so I see a lot of communication flow I see a lot of like uh, dynamic work environment that's going to start to shift themselves or smooth themselves out okay so overall for the next two um, weeks I feel like just you know a lot of um, a lot of um, social interaction, a lot of engagements, um, a lot of social engagements, which are very, very healthy for you. So I do sense that um, it's going to be a very smooth sailing next two weeks. If you're juggling between two people, once again, just be mindful about that. That's the only warning I'm getting out here. I do feel that um, for those of you who are single, um, I see like possibly an earth sign coming through the end of this month. Taurus Virgo Capricorn if you're on the market for dating and things like that there is somebody coming through waiting on communication from you or you're gonna get some communication from them and it seems like a very um, it seems to me like a very very attractive person I I'm seeing darker skin I'm seeing a lot of contrast with this person 
possibly darker skin but lighter eyes or you know like dark eyes light hair so some type of a a very strange mix uh, of contrast in their facial features and it makes them very attractive so they just seem to be stunning like um, very stunning and attractive male or females okay so Taurus Virgo Capricorn coming through towards the end of the month so I wish you all the best Leos let's see what's going on for Virgos Okay, so Virgo, um, <clears throat> this reading is going to be pretty, pretty direct, okay? Um, first of all, I feel almost as if you're dating somebody who's like a social chameleon, okay? When they're with you, they're, uh, so when they're with good people, they're very, very good. And then when they're with like bad people, they can be surprisingly very, very disappointingly bad. So you're dealing with this person who's very smart, very intelligent. Um, you don't know if they're a good person or not, mainly because they don't have that strong sense of self. And the thing about social chameleons is that they take on the characteristics of their environment. And as a result of it, it's, it's somebody who is like a hollow shell. And they don't really have much else, much substance be beyond, you know, morphing onto other people so I hope that makes sense to you I feel like you you know who this person is you've been dealing with them for some time this can be a romantic interest but I feel for a lot of you it might be a family member it might be somebody you you work with but I feel like somehow um, there's this victim mentality about them where it's not, you know, like regardless of what their actions, regardless of what they do, it's never about them. It's always about somebody else pushing them to make that decision. So I feel like there's a victim mentality about this person. This person is a social chameleon. And like I said, it, they don't have a strong sense of self. And you're trying to rack your brain, trying to figure out why are they like this? You know, are they really a good person? Because I'm just very utterly confused. And the thing is, what you see is pretty much what you're getting. It is a hollow shell. It is a person without much substance. So just accept that fact. I feel that it's going to make life a lot easier for you. And it's also going to allow you to, to understand how to best deal with the person. And I feel like a lot of the time, you see the best in other people. Um, even the worst person, you know, you, you, you see the good in them and you know that um, you know, it is true that there is that whole nature versus, versus nurture argument and that everyone has goodness in them. It just needs to be cultivated. It needs an opportunity to shine. But I do sense the person that you're dealing with has proven over and over again that, you know, they're not at that point where they can change themselves uh, or even better themselves. So I feel like this is a lost cause if you are looking at this person as if, it is a project that you can fix it. You're already off to a bad start. So my advice here is what you see is pretty much what you get. So cut your losses and move on, okay? Um, I see you like being very curious about this person. I see you like um, possibly trying to figure out their motives, trying to figure out how they work, trying to figure out why they are such a social chameleon and you're trying to figure out their true identity. Well, they morph. So don't waste any more of your time, okay? For a lot of you, and especially those of you who are dealing with this person, and this person sounds familiar to you, and um, you're in a romantic relationship with them, and, you know, it, it seems to me like a, 
an emotional roller coaster. It seems to me like it might be an emotional roller coaster. At their best, they make you feel like you're on top of the world. At their worst, they make you feel like you're very, very alone and isolated in this relationship. So that's what I'm feeling here. So my advice here is to cut your losses because you're trying to make a project out of a person and that's not going to work, okay? Um, for others of you, I see that you're dealing, you feel almost like, I see you sitting there looking at your life and you're asking the universe, why are you sending me the same types of people? And I feel like this could be in love, this could be in work or even like, you know, in friendships. You're asking why the universe is sending you the same type of a work situation where you might be um, be used and abused by your boss. You might like um, have a lot of people dump their work on you and you don't know why it happens over and over and over and over again. So you're just like, why are you, why is this happening to me? Why am I like encountering the same problems? Why am I encountering the same people? Why am I dating the same types of people? They look different, but everything is just all the same. So I feel like truthfully, if it's uh, something is like a recurring pattern, it means that you have to be the one to break the pattern. So for example, if you're in an environment where people are dumping the responsibilities on you, or they're not being fair, it is really important for you to be the one to speak out and to do it in a way that is persuasive and that is well thought out, okay? And really to stand up for yourself. If you find yourself dating the same people, and I feel like a lot of you, um, you have a very good heart and you want to fix broken people, but people need to like arrive at these lessons and conclusions on their own they cannot be fixed by another person, okay? So it's a matter of maintaining boundaries and it's a matter of looking at a person and um, seeking people who are whole, who are healthy emotionally, physically, and who are comfortable with themselves so that they're not a project to you, okay? Because um, coming into the a relationship with the intention that you want to fix somebody um, it doesn't put you in the same footing on the same playing field and it is a it is going to bring about like um, power power struggles and power games so be mindful about that okay on the work front though things are looking very very good for you for a lot of you I do feel um, travel travel enjoyment like personal enjoyment is, is very very high on the agenda for the next two weeks I do sense as well um, there's a situation if you're you're in a uh, in a work environment. There's some type of investigation. There are some people like a group of people who are possibly in cahoots with one another, and there's something brought to light. And there's an investigation. I don't feel anything being uncovered this month, but I do feel greatly in two months' time. So that's going to bring us around August. Something is being uncovered in two months' time. Um, you might be called into somebody's office and you might be asked questions where you have to, um, I guess like someone will ask you like, what do you know about this situation or what do you know about this person or what do you think about this person? Um, honesty is the key because I feel like you don't have a good impression of that person that they're asking you about anyways. So, you know, try to be honest and, um, but because of it, it makes you feel a little bit like paranoid. And you might want to distance your, your, yourself from them in the future. If you're, you know, if it's a coworker, if it's a friend, you might choose to distance yourself. But either way, it is protecting you, actually, from some other things that might have happened by, if you had been, you know, closer to them, you might have divulged personal information and then you would be even more paranoid. So I feel like everything is okay. You are a very good judge of character, Virgo. I wouldn't worry about it, but I do send some, some type of an investigation, some type of an internal, um, dialogue happening about, you know, whether or not you trust this person. So dealing with that social chameleon that I mentioned at the beginning, they exhibit the characteristics of whoever it is that they, they're trying to please. Okay. So this is a very hollow, hollow, um, I, I feel like it's a person with a very hollow shell, okay, hollow interior, and they don't really have much 
substance be the side wanting to please everyone and wanting to like take on the they they just don't have a very strong sense of self okay um if you are going on dates for those of you who are single i do feel that there are many many potential prospects coming in for you but i don't feel any of them really stand out as um you know stable partners I also feel too you are very very picky but you're you're being picky for the right reasons especially for the next two weeks okay um, the travel situation there's communication back and forth between some type of travel kind, similarly to Leo but I don't feel like it's being the travels happening for this month I do feel it's possibly next month or in two months time okay let me see if there's any last minute thing that I'm sensing here I feel like for those of you who are single and like kind of playing the field and there's nothing wrong with that if you're playing the field um, I feel like one week I, I see this flip-flopping energy and this is actually very rare for a Virgo reading I feel like one week you're really really liking this person and then the, the other the next week you're really really liking and feeling someone else so I feel like um, there's nothing wrong with that but I, I do sense that maybe it's best for you to figure out like maybe you're flip-flopping mainly because one person doesn't have all the characteristics that you want and where they're lacking the other person is is making up for it so both people might not entirely meet all of your expectations otherwise you would not be flip-flopping right so take it in strides or at least you know accept it for what it is that they're okay but they're not meeting all of your expectations so that's why you're flip-flopping back and forth okay so Wish you the best, Virgos, and talk to you soon. So next up we have Libra. So Libras, give me a moment. Let me just uh, shuffle your cards. Okay, so Libras, um, first off, I'm going to say this. Um, I feel like there's a karmic, long-standing karmic relationship you've been dealing with for quite some time, okay? And um, one of the things that I'm, I'm getting from this situation is I feel like someone is uh, always coming back to you. And they only come back to you whenever the world has beaten them down, whenever they need like a self-esteem boost, whenever they need somebody to, you know, make them feel better. They always come back into your life. And it's like you're, you're that stable foundation for them. And they only come when they're at their worst. They don't come to you when they're at their best, when they're on top of the world. They, they tend to forget about you. And I feel like this is an ongoing issue in which, you know, you 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 fix them when they're broken and when they're whole again they leave and they go out of your life so it's this uh, constant you know coming in and out of your life and it is really taking a heavy emotional toll on you the other thing that I'm sensing is that um, because you're you know the the scales the balancing act and you're also very, very other oriented as well. I feel like it, it, it makes you feel good as well to fix things, to fix broken people, to fix, pro to make people, um, you know, turn people into projects and to make them whole again. You're okay with doing that. But I do sense that in a way it is very emotionally depleting for you to keep engaging in this type of a, a relationship and I feel like it, it doesn't just span across one person it spans across like many uh, close interpersonal relationships that that are in your life so you want to be mindful of this and you want to like draw clear boundaries and not be someone's um, go-to whenever they need a self-esteem boost okay the person that you're dealing with 
um, is, is like someone who is considered the bachelor or the bachelorette. They're not in the, the right frame of mind and in the right emotional space right now to be in a relationship with another person. So already I feel the relationship is very, very burdensome or this interpersonal relationship is very burdensome. For a lot of you, it could be family members, co-workers, or even a significant love relationship. But I do feel that it's an ongoing issue. There's a lot of love, a lot of, um, you know, care, affection in this relationship, but it is very one-sided. It is coming predominantly from you to the other person. The other person, they want to be on their own and they're not in a right frame of mind to reciprocate, okay? So it's a very one-sided relationship. You need to be mindful of this fact and you need to let it go. And I feel like at this point in your life, emotionally, you're in a good space where you want to be on your own. You want to like take care of real world responsibilities pertaining to your job, the next phase in your career, the next steps in your life. So you're at a point where you don't need that distraction. And um, it's best for you to minimize distraction and unhealthy people in your life at this present moment because you have a lot on your plate that you need to take care of and um, scattering your energy amongst projects and people that don't pan out is just not the practical way to deal with the energy okay there's a lot of busyness uh, happening for for the next two weeks and I do feel it's in your best interest to you know do things on your own and to be mindful about responsibilities that need to be taken care of so that you can better yourself, so that you can, you know, move your life along in the way that you, you hope professionally, okay? You have a very, very strong energy here. You're showing up as the magician and the moon. The magician is someone who's more than capable of taking um, care of themselves, manipulating situation, manipulating not in a negative sense, but, you know, using everything they have at their disposal to manifest things. Um, underneath that is the moon, and the moon deals with lack of clarity. It deals with lack of direction and confusion. So if you can only decide on what you want to do, once again, don't flip-flop. If you can only decide what you want to do, independent of other people, I do feel that you can harness this momentous energy in order to steer your life in the way that you, you want. But I feel like a lot of you might be waiting on inputs from other people, waiting on how things are going to pan out with this significant other, with this significant karmic relationship bond, so that you can make a life decision. But I feel like no matter what, by the end of the month, I feel that you're going to have to be on your own and you're going to have to do this on your own, okay? Uh, that significant relationship, that karmic bond, there has been a lot of strife. There has been a lot of struggles. The other person is not walking on your life path. They are not a... Um, they're not a person to compromise and I feel that you are and you've done a lot of compromises in the past and I feel like it, it is time for you to think about yourself first and not put yourself in the same recurring pattern, okay? Uh, what I do feel is understanding our own motives, understanding that uh, loving someone is um, wanting them to be whole, okay? Two people who are broken cannot come together and have a functional, healthy relationship or interaction. So I feel like you're starting to realize this and you're starting to realize as well, there are some things that you have to fix within yourself, within your own life in order for you to be whole. So I feel like in the past you might have blamed this person, but I feel like it takes two to tangle. So it's really important for you to just, you know, identify that and identify who the person is and, and then, you know, break that pattern of behavior, of relating between you and that other person. I feel for a lot of you, the other person might be a fire sign. So this is um, Sagittarius, Leo, Aries, or an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I'm leaning more towards the earth element, mainly because of the way they're showing up. Um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, they might have a combination of earth and fire where they are afraid to let you go. But on the other hand, they're just not able to be in a good relation, like a, a good relationship partner is what I'm sensing. Um, what I do feel is um, by the last week of this month, there's going to be some truths. I see you literally digging up some, some information and some information coming to you. And it's not coming without, you know, any work from your end. I see you physically digging up some dirt 
finding out some some information and because of it you're just going to be like okay I'm done I see you dropping your load I see you dropping your burden in the baggage and you're moving forward which is um, a really good energy but I do feel that the energy itself can emotion whatever you're finding out it's going to be emotionally destabilizing so be prepared for it okay uh, when you go digging for information you're going to get exactly what you want uh, and a lot more so just be prepared for that okay that's what I'm, I'm feeling here and I don't feel that um, I feel like the whole time your suspicions were um, your suspicions were guided by your intuition and I feel like you need it concrete proof because you are an air sign you are a very rational cerebral air sign and because of it you feel like my intuition is telling me this but I, I don't trust intuition I need concrete evidence so I see you digging up some information and because you're digging up you're gonna find out a lot more than you hope for and at one point you know it's like uh, opening up a can of worms at one point you're just like okay I can't deal with any more surprises I'm just gonna cut my losses and walk away um, for others of you I see like a physical move like moving outside of the state moving outside of the area where you are currently living I see you looking for new opportunities either in work I see you looking for new opportunities like work home um, work and home coming up very strongly I don't feel the home situation coming in this month but I feel like you packing up boxes. So I don't know if you're readying for a move, but I don't feel you're moving just yet. But you're doing all the prep work, which is great. Be ahead of the game is what I always say. Um, I do feel a significant voyage happening as well, a trip voyage. Um, I see going over like a body of water, like a river, mountains possibly as well. So possibly even a different time zone, but I, I feel like a major, major relocation for you. And I feel almost as if you're kind of hesitant about taking that first step, but it's going to pan out well. I feel it's going to pan out well for you. Um, let me see if there's anything I'm, com uh, I'm seeing coming through as well. It's basically telling me that I feel no matter what, for the next few months, you are going to be on your own and you're going to be able to um, solidify a lot of good things and new things in your life, okay? Going back to the old is not recommended and I feel like you, you have no choice here. You're going to have to forge ahead and I, I feel that for a lot of you, um, I, I see like a lot of solitary cards. I see a lot of um, cards that indicate, you know, take taking initiation and doing things and making decisions for ourselves that's coming in very strongly all right so libras i do wish you the best um just be mindful of the energy it's um i feel like it's very final whatever comes up it's kind of like it will make or break something so i feel that at least you have that closure so that you can move ahead in the past i feel like you were dithering you were taking your time and you were like uh, not proactive enough mainly because you were waiting on other people and I feel like this is the month in which you realize I really can't put my life on hold anymore and there are other opportunities out there for me that are much better than where I'm at now which is great and I feel like you're doing it in strides and you're doing it with a very determined and also with a very like final um, with resolution like you're you're doing it resolutely which means that you have been kind of mired in it for too long and the universe is like telling you it's time to move on okay so it's a very very final decision being arrived at or, or um, coming into your mist coming in the end of this month all right so I wish you the best Libras so on to the next sign we have Scorpios See what's going on with Scorpios.
Okay, so... Scorpios, uh, one of the first thing that I'm seeing for you is there are new job and financial opportunities that are coming through. And at first glance, this might not be everything that you're hoping for or you feel like, you know, um, it's like on your level is what I feel like. The salary might not be good enough. The compensation might not be good enough. There might not be good benefits, perks, and things like that. And um, it might even require a, uh, a change, a drastic change in a career direction, a drastic, uh, uh, something different about this job where you feel like it doesn't meet all the requirements just yet. But I do feel it is a very, very good opportunity as well, okay? I feel like for others of you, there might be multiple opportunities, but something is coming in that is new, exciting, but you're, you're hesitant about taking on this offer because you're thinking about it long term, okay? Um, I do feel if you are waiting for other new opportunities um, in July, it might pan out a little bit better. So don't take this first job. If you've applied for multiple and you still have a job that you're working at, I would say like it's best to wait until for something to come in in the July time frame rather than going with this job when your intuition is telling you that you're not going to be happy, okay? Because I feel like trust your intuition and uh, you have very, very strong psychic capabilities and as well as very very strongly highly in tune intuition so it, it is best for you to trust it okay um, what I'm also feeling as well is for a lot of you and I'm seeing a lot there is a, um, a kind of like a friends with benefits situation and I feel like the other person is very very interested in you and I feel like you are physically intimate with this person but you don't see it panning out you don't see it panning out um, I feel that you might be giving them, them the impression that you want more, but deep down you don't want more. So it's best for you, if, you, if this sounds familiar at all, I feel like it's a more physically gratifying relationship than anything, but you don't see it panning out. So it's best for if you were to be honest with them so that you can, you know, if you're not in love with them, let them go so that they can find somebody else. I feel like a lot of you might be dealing with an earth sign. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Um, you don't see this person as like a long-term prospect and you're just having fun, but I feel like they are starting to become very emotionally invested in you and they thought that they have something long-term, okay? Um, for others of you who are trying to get together with an earth sign, I feel like there might be work situations that are interfering in the relationship as well. So be patient on that end, okay? But if you're just messing around with an earth sign, I feel that you want to be truthful and honest and not lead them on, okay? Um, I do feel a lot of opportunities for social engagement and for meeting people that you can have like flings with. But I feel like at this point, you're not ready to jump into a new relationship just yet, even though you have somebody in mind. I do feel there is somebody strongly in mind for you. Uh, going back to anybody from the past, especially if it's somebody you've known since 2015, you're headed the wrong way. You're headed towards disappointment. You're headed towards like more strife and you're headed towards, um, I feel like you're headed the wrong way and you're not on your path to moving forward. There can be many, many delays. If you're going back to a job that you've had in 2015, if you're going back to a person from 2015, it is not recommended and it is not going to end well. So be mindful about that. I feel as well your intuition is guiding you in the right direction and I feel that the pull, the, the attraction, uh, the chemistry is so great from the past and you know you have a lot of trouble letting go of situations from the past as well and you feel like if it's, um, if I work at it, if we both work at it, it's going to work out and it's going to be like it was before and I feel like well on an astrological level I feel like these things that have been weaned from your life from 2015 they cannot the door will not open up for for things to be made right okay they're not on your karmic destiny anymore so be mindful of it and move ahead what I'm also feeling is for those of you dealing with legal issues 
I do feel, unfortunately, I see like a dip in your financial situation because of legal issues, because of obligations resulting from these legal issues that are not in your favor. So you might have to send out money to other people. This can be a um, civil lawsuit. It can be a divorce. It can be, you know, like a custody battle, um, dividing assets. But I am feeling like some money coming from your end to other people. And... Um, it's important for you to really, you know, focus on whether or not you have enough and try to come up with a payment or an installment plan so that you can get the situation taken care of, okay? I do feel some type of a contract that has been brought up in the beginning of the month. If there is a contract, I feel something is a little bit off about that and I feel that you're, you're hesitating on signing this contract. I see you flip-flopping back and forth. I see you trying to uh, go out of your way to avoid something that needs to be signed, something that needs to be finalized once and for all. So I feel like don't delay on it and don't um, procrastinate on it. It's not going to do well, okay? So just be mindful about that. What I'm also sensing as well is um, when it comes to, I feel like there is a very, very uh, deep-rooted emotional connection that you have with someone. And it seems to me it might have been like eight years Eight months, eight years. I'm, I'm inclined to think eight years because um, once you are devoted to somebody, it takes a lot for the relationship to end. So I feel like eight months, eight years, there is something deeply rooted from eight months ago, eight years ago, which would bring us to, from, you know, 2015. And you're trying to make sense of it. You're trying to right some wrongs, which is very, very good for you. So, wish you the best, Scorpio. So, Sagittarius, um, give me a moment. Let me get your card shuffled out, and then we'll go into your reading. So Sagittarius, uh, one of the main things that um, I'm, I'm feeling here is that I feel like you're dealing with somebody um, who is a little bit of a flake, okay? They're trying to make this situation right. They're trying to correct some things that have happened between you and them in the past. And I feel like they might be a little bit younger than you for some reason. It could be children, it could be family members, or even like a relationship partner that is a little bit younger than you but they seem to me to be very very flaky I feel like they're coming into the point where they are starting to realize how their actions have negatively affected you and they're trying to right a situation and I do feel that you're um, you're very you're starting to get very cold and you're starting to be distancing yourself as well and you 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 feel like oh you know uh, talk is cheap. I'll uh, believe it when I see it. So you're not entirely crossing them off yet, but you do want to see concrete actions on, on their end. And I do feel they're going to go out of their way to really, you know, try to fix this situation with you. Um, what I'm sensing as well is um, in your home environment, I definitely feel there are celebrations, many, many celebrations coming through towards the end of this month. And I'm feeling like some celebrations re, re, um, surrounding child rearing. So this can be like a bridal shower, engagement, or something like that. Something big, okay? So engagement, marriages, and something regarding like children. So birthday parties even, or even... Um, I'm feeling even like um, bridal showers. I'm going to wait for that helicopter to pass. I apologize. Wow. 
What I'm also seeing here is that um, there are some major, major concerns when it comes to children coming in for this month. And I believe I mentioned that at the beginning of the month, too. There are some uh, disputes about, you know, there, there are some lessons about tough love. And honestly, I feel like when I, I did the June reading, I felt like the tough love potentially coming in from your from your end to theirs. So, you know, you're implementing some some type of restriction or you're implementing some type of a um, kind of like you're distancing yourself so that the other person can learn from their own mistakes and can, you know, try to do the right thing. So it's like withholding love, withholding affection to, to get the other person to induce like some type of a behavioral change in the other person. I feel like the other person that you're dealing with, though, they believe that tough love is coming from their end. So I feel like this mirroring effect where they might also withhold love and withhold affection in order to, you know, induce some type of personality change in you. So I feel this, this whole thing where the other person care about you and you care about them likewise, but there's almost this discord regarding what is appropriate, who's the, the parent in the relationship, as well as how a child-parent relationship is supposed to be. So I definitely feel some re-examination happening regarding that you know, parent-child dynamic and who is allowed to do what and what is the healthy or appropriate way to handle this parent-child dynamic or, as well as even how to fix it. Um, what I'm sensing is um, when it comes to your financial situations, a lot of you are being very cautious about spending. I feel that you're you're reining everything in and you're trying to like almost like make ends meet is what I'm, I'm feeling. There is a long standing issue where there might have been like um, there's a long standing decision that you're waiting on. It has been dragged on for about seven months or so. And it has left you feeling in limbo, in, in limbo. So as a result of it, you feel like, I'm not really sure. So it, it could be a court case for a lot of you. It could be, you know, some type of a payout that's supposed to happen. You've been waiting for it for quite some time and you don't know like what your financial situation is going to look like until this situation is finalized. So I feel like you're in suspense. And in the meantime, I feel like you're kind of hoarding your finances in order to, to you know, weather... Um, a rainy day that's what I'm sensing um, the financial situation will be okay but it's just you don't like the idea of being kept in the dark about things okay so you're you're doing that um, for others of you I'm getting this very very strong message coming through um, for those of you who have grown up in an environment with a very strict father figure okay I do feel that there was a lot of like withholding of affection or the environment, the home environment itself was not very warm, welcoming. It seemed very sterile. It seemed like it was run like a military camp. That's what I'm getting. And um, there's that emotional disconnect from the parent to you. And I feel like it's mainly the father figure in the relationship, okay, or in that household. And I feel like a lot of you might have trouble as a result expressing how you feel, expressing love, expre expressing affection. So this is something you want to be mindful about um, when if you especially have your own children and you find yourself reverting back to, you know, that whole tough love, discipline, emotional detachment, emotional withdrawal. Um, holding back love and affection just to get the other person to do what you want. It is a form of subtle manipulation, so you want to be mindful about that, okay? For others of you who have a father figure that has been, you know, like that, who's very stern, very just, um, you might not have had a good relationship with the father figure. I feel like especially if this father figure has passed on, I do sense them coming through in the reading and there's some type of a situation where they're just like don't let the same things repeat don't let you know your childhood upbringing affect the way that you deal with your children right now so I feel like a lot of like childhood conditioning when it comes to expressing ourselves on an emotional level and a lot of the times um, you might ha uh, be prone to you know, like uh, emotional outbursts because you don't know how to control or you don't know how to express it in a constructive way. So working on your communication and especially working on how you can communicate with other people in, in a, an affectionate way 
it's going to be very important to you, okay? I do feel that it makes you uncomfortable, but I do sense that this is something that is going to not only help your parent-child relationship, but it's going to allow you to open yourself up emotionally to love relationships as well and to welcome new friends and love partners that are <clears throat> floating around your periphery, but that, you know, you might have held them at an arm's length and you might not know how to properly e e express friendship and affection okay so that's what I'm, I'm seeing and obviously that is only going to apply to a minority but I do feel some type of a change around regarding how we relate to another person is strongly indicated and it's going to be very good for you it's going to be very therapeutic and healing for others of you who are expecting like you know second um, a new child I do feel pregnancy motherhood and and these issues like fatherhood motherhood these are all coming in. So there is telling me that, you know, resolving family karma first will allow us to create a better home environment for our own family that we're trying to create. OK, so that's coming through as well. And um, there is some anxiety around you about finances. So I feel like that situation will lift itself up. I do see some type of a reunion coming in for you, but it's more family oriented rather than love oriented. OK. Um, for others of you who are dealing with a relationship partner, um, so I, I'm feeling like if you're dealing with a relationship partner and you feel like they're not taking a lot of the initiative and you're the one bearing the responsibility of maintaining, uh, of upkeeping this relationship, I do feel that you're going to stand your ground and you're going to, you know, tell the other person to, to step up. Because I feel like you're, I'm getting this, you know, you're exasperated and you're, you want reciprocity. And then for others of you who are dealing with someone as a romantic partner who's quite frivolous, who is, who scatters their energy and who spends money like there's no tomorrow. I feel that this is a major cause of concern or rift in the relationship as well. So financial planning, if, it, if it's a significant relationship partner I do feel some type of a discussion about finances coming through in the works for you both and it's going to allow you to reach a mutual understanding so uh, start that conversation as soon as you can okay it's going to be very good for the both of you to understand where the other person where one another is coming from all right so next up we have Capricorn See what's going on for Capricorn. Okay, so Capricorns, uh, first off in love, you've got a fire sign who's really admiring you and they're really, um, there is a really strong sense of attraction. I don't know if it's being reciprocated from your end to theirs, but there's a fire sign that is looking at you and they really want to approach you and I feel like they're going to start to approach you within the next two weeks, okay? This person is, um, I feel like it might be a little bit older. It might be somebody with children already um, I feel like they have very, very good um, intentions, okay? I feel like their intentions are really pure. They're a little bit aggressive is, is what I'm, I'm sensing, but they're not obnoxious or disrespectful. I just feel like they know what they want, and I feel like they have a child. They might have been uh, divorced. They might have been separated, and I feel like you're sparking something within them. I see somebody with um, either long hair 
if you're dating women or like a beard if you're dating men okay like a full body beard is what i'm, I'm, I'm sensing um like facial hair someone quite attractive actually and he seems to he and she or she seem to be quite tall but i do feel that both parties really like you if you're dealing with uh if you're dating women and you have this fire sign in your midst this person seems to me to be a little bit shy but they definitely are interested in you so that's what I'm, I'm sensing here very strong fire sign Sagittarius Leo Aries that is in the your mist that is really passionate about you um, I also feel like this can also play out as a uh, romantic like prospect or it can be a work situation in which they want you to partner up with them and they have something like a project that they feel you would be the ideal candidate for okay and uh, the project I feel like it, it's going to be one of those major major launching pad type of a situation that can be very good for you for your long-term career prospects what I'm also getting as well is um, I see a lot of you are really breaking out of your shell this month a lot of you are thinking you know um, life is too short I've been guarded and I've been sequestering myself away in my own little world for quite some time and I'm ready to break out of it so you're finding opportunities in your environment in order to branch out in order to have fun in order to like you know uh, re-energize reinvigorate revitalize your love life specifically or even to bring new people into your life so that you can have more fun um, there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like you're definitely practical about it. Um, I do see like concerns about money, concerns about money for the next six months. So it doesn't mean that you're going to suffer from financial shortages for the next six months. But I feel like some, um, some shift in your financial situation possibly happening this month and then you're trying to plan out what you're going to do for the next six months so that's what I mean by concerns about how you're going to make money how much money is coming in for the next six months okay um, I don't feel like I need to worry about Capricorns when it comes to money you're very practical but I do see some some shift either a shift in a career shift in job or something like that coming through within the next six months so you're kind of like um, swirling money away and you're kind of saving up as well so there's a lot of celebration happening the very last week of this month okay I see somebody younger with dark hair coming through somebody younger with darker hair coming through darker hair possibly darker complexion but somebody younger than you and I feel like there is a, a little bit of a flakiness with this person there's social interaction like gatherings going out having a good time having drinks and things like that but there's this uh, person with darker hair that might um, it might be best for you to avoid them I see this flaky energy about them so they might make plans with you and they don't follow through and it seems like they've done this more than once so you might know who I'm talking about but I feel like you're sitting at home you have like multiple engagements to go to and you're uh, entrusting that this person is going to follow through and I mean to to you know come through but then I think they leave you disappointed again on the other hand for others of you who are dealing with a water sign that you've known for quite some time I feel water sign um, Pisces Scorpio cancer and this is somebody that you've known for a while like you watch them grow up or you've known them through a period of many years I do see some false promises being made again so my advice is not to go back to people from the past okay I see like promises being made and then broken once again I don't feel that it comes to you as a surprise but it, you know like one thing after another you feel like okay I need a change in social circle because I'm dealing with people whose uh, energies are very like erratic unstable ungrounded and also flaky as well so that's going to be very frustrating okay I definitely feel like things working out very well with this fire sign definitely there's a lot of attraction here um, it seems like it's a very good match for you um, Capricorns it seems like it's a very good match so I would say don't overthink it go for it okay it's going to pan out well um, towards the end of this month I feel that if you're kind of like transitioning from like a water sign towards a fire sign 
if you are transitioning from a water sign towards a fire sign, I see some information coming to light with that water sign. That's really going to help you solidify your decision. If before you didn't know whether or not you should go with this fire sign, I do feel that information coming in the end of the month uh, is really going to help you, guide you in the right direction and guide you away potentially from the water sign towards the um, the fire sign, which is a better option for you, I, I feel. All right. So I wish you the best and take care of yourself. Enjoy the rest of your June and don't worry about finances. Things will stabilize for you. And I feel like in two months, okay? So next up, we have Aquarius. So give me a second. I'm going to shuffle out the cards. Okay, so Aquarius, um, at the center of the spread here, we do have the Page of Cups, and this is an offer for a friendship, offer for love, and it, even an offer for like social engagement as well, okay? Like going out, having fun, and things like that. I do feel that it is more on the love front. It is more leaning towards uh, the love front. What I'm also feeling as well is um, you're, there is a person in your midst that you've had a lot of like weird energy with. So timing was always a major, major problem. And I, I feel like you don't quite trust the other person. You, you like them. You, you trust them as a good person. But I feel like there's something in their past. There's something that you're finding out that you don't really jive well with and you feel like they might have kept some information and it's coming to light, okay? So you don't trust them on a moral level, but you know they're a good person, they have a good heart. And I feel like likewise, there's this uh, weird, awkward energy that's circulating around. And if you're dealing with a, um, a water sign, this is a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or if you're dealing with a an earth sign, a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, I feel like regardless of what you think about you know their behavior i feel like there is a justification for everything that they're doing and they're actually very open and honest about it you just don't like what you see so the point here is that i feel like you're you're judging them and you're disapproving of their personality or their behavior but i feel like what you see is pretty much what you're getting so I guess we can say that at least they're honest, right? You might not approve of their 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 conduct, the way they live their lives, but you have to agree that, you know, out of respect for honesty and integrity, at least they're honest about it. So I, I feel like that's what's happening here. So on the one hand, you're just like, I don't know about this person, but on the other hand, you have to admit that they are honest. So you're grappling with this moral dilemma and you're grappling, grappling with your preconceived notion of what you know they should be like so don't project your ideals onto another person okay accept them at face value and try to accept the other person on a human level because we are all very different and we can't cast judgment on another person and how they live their life okay so be mindful about that you're showing up here as the queen of swords and the queen of swords can be someone who's very very judgmental and she doesn't give people like, um, you know, second chances. She doesn't give people the benefit of the doubt. So you want to be mindful about this energy and once again, not casting judgment on other people 
um, if they have done something wrong to you specifically, then you definitely can address that, okay? But if they haven't done anything wrong to you and they've done it to another person, you're not involved in that process. So it is best for you to like um, take it in strides or take it w with a grain of salt and uh, not pass judgment. So I, I guess I've harped on that long enough. Um, what else I'm, I'm seeing here is that there is something around you. I feel like it might be a water sign or it might be an earth sign that is posing as a major, major, major temptation for you, okay? It's a major temptation and I feel like this is an ongoing issue. This is an ongoing temptation. So I feel like there's a lot of a moral dilemma happening with you where you're just like, I really want this, my heart really wants this, but on, on, the, one, on the other hand, my head is saying this is never going to work out. This is just never going to pan out the way that I hope because the other person, they're not exactly what I'm looking for or they're just not, you know, um, I don't trust them. So I feel like there's this whole issue about trust. There's this whole issue about honesty. There's this um, inner struggle between the heart and the head, what the heart wants versus what the head wants. And, you know, being an air sign, your head is always going to win over because you're very good at rationalizing arguments and, and justifying things, okay? So I feel that, give me one second, Aquarius. I'm gonna wait for that helicopter to pass through. I don't know why he keeps coming back. He's been looping around like seven times now. Okay. So, yeah, he's gone. So, what I'm feeling is um, there is a, a major temptation being posed. Uh, you, you might be solicited by either a water sign, possibly even another air sign and an earth sign. But I feel water and earth coming through. And um, it's basically saying not to jump the gun. And it's basically uh, saying for you to like work out this inner struggle within yourself and figure out why you are not allowing yourself the freedom to enjoy life and live through the heart. That's what it's saying here. And I feel like maybe if you ask yourself that question and if you sit and, you know, think about it for a few minutes, you will have the, the answer that you need, okay? What I'm also feeling is on the work front, there is a person bringing a work opportunity to you. For those of you who are interested in like, or have been looking for, for a new job, for a new uh, income generating opportunity, new projects even for the past few months, I feel something coming through by the end of this month. That is going to be everything that you hope it would be. So not only is it a new job opportunity, I feel like it's going to bring about a lifestyle change. A lot of you might be, you know, earning a lot more in this new job. A lot of you might have to relocate. In a, so in a way, it's like a, a job that brings about a new opportunity for you to revamp or even restart your entire life, okay? This is a big, big, big deal. And I feel like for a lot of you, your financial situation is very, very stable right now. And you're comfortable, you're comfortable, but don't be complacent, okay? New opportunities that come in, if it like um, appeals to you emotionally, is probably your intuition telling you to go with it. So don't uh, knock it, just you know, try your best to be open-minded, okay? I feel like, yeah, there we go. Open-mindedness might be something for you to reconsider because I feel like um, there's a, a very strong judgmental vibe about you. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. Aquarius are very, very fixed in their opinion. Um, and because you're so fixed and because, like, you, you have a very strong moral compass and you hold everyone to a very strong sense of, you know, moral integrity that you have trouble when someone that you care about fall off their pedestal and you never look at them the same way again so um, Aquarius and Leo's are, are very big on that and it, it's hard for you to like um, see someone in the same light once you know they've fallen off their pedestal or once you know too much about them so the the trick here is to be open-minded everyone is going through their own life the best that they know how so they need to make decisions based on what they need to survive so don't judge okay and, and don't um, I guess like um, where no one is in a good position to judge anybody else okay we can only judge ourselves um, 
So new work opportunity coming through. I see for a lot of you, if you were dealing with somebody who was like, um, who was kind of shady in the past, and this is, um, seems to me like it might be an air sign or a fire sign. So Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, fire sign is um, Sagittarius, Tor Sagittarius um, Leo, Aries. If you're dealing with someone who has been like very shifty, shady in the past, I feel for you once and for all, you're letting that relationship go. So I feel you dropping it and walking away. So this is like that final moment of like exhaling. You are dropping it and you're letting it go. And I feel that on the heels of that, you've got another earth sign. So not to worry, okay? And this is somebody who is a lot more honest. So honesty is very, very big for you. And I feel like you are going to meet your match when it comes to someone who's very reliable and very, very honest as well. So overall, very good month coming through. Um, don't succumb to temptation for this week. I feel like things will sort themselves out. You will have more information or at least you will have a better, you might be in a better state to make um, decisions by the last week of this month, okay? So I wish you all the best, Aquarius. And we are moving on to the next sign, which is Capricorn. Uh, I'm sorry, last sign, which is Pisces. So give me a moment, Pisces. I'm going to shuffle out your cards. What's in store for Pisces, mid-month, June 2016. Pisces, mid-month, June Okay, so Pisces, um, the first thing that I'm sensing here is that we have an ending to something and the, re I, I guess like one thing is ending and then you're rebuilding your life right after. So which is a really good uh, thing. You're shifting from a relationship and then you're shifting from that and then you're ending off doing something on your own. So I, I do feel that overall it is a very, very uh, positive shift in the right direction. It's all about building new foundation, branching out, starting over and being, you know, once again, being productive and being very certain and clear-minded and okay on your own. So either way, it seems to me to be a very beautiful energy. At the center of this spread here, I do have the Knight of Swords in the reverse position. So the Knight of Swords in the reverse, the, the Knight of Swords is the fastest moving knight in the deck. It does show somebody who's very, very upset, somebody who's very, very angry, and they might charge into a situation looking for a fight, wanting to engage in a fight, wanting to engage in conflict and, you know, itching to prove their point, itching to prove the other person wrong. So it's a very aggressive energy that is conflict driven. I feel like in the past you were in a situation with another person and it's a deep rooted karmic relationship. And for others of you, this might be an ex, like um, an ex-spouse. For others, it might be a family member. I'm feeling family member and ex-lovers very, very strongly. And this was a very conflictual type of a relationship. And I feel almost like um, every time you got together, there was just a chaos and conflict and a lot of disputes and argument. And um, the cards are clearly indicating here that the karmic relationship has ended. You 
and the other person are I don't feel you're on speaking terms I don't feel that they want to engage in conflict with you and frankly you're tired of it so you don't want to re-engage with them in conflict um, I feel that the relationship is done and over with but there is still some type of financial arrangement financial entanglements between the two of you that you have to work out so you might have children you might have joint assets you might even still share the same property so there's financial uh, considerations in place where you can't extract yourself cleanly from the other person so you both are like actively trying to avoid one another is what I'm feeling here um, be very mindful about not provoking them just you know just just let the the situation go because I don't feel like I feel like it's over you can't do anything about it okay but I feel like whenever we are romantically linked with another person even though we know that they're not the right person for us but if we're uh, if they start to show kindness if we likewise start to show kindness towards them there's always that you know what if that come creeps up in the back of your mind and you think like maybe well no there's no maybe here it's done and over with so be careful about provoking them be careful about them provoking you seeing the situation for what it is and not making the mistake of re-engaging the second time I feel this is something you want to be very very clear about and this is something you need to like wholeheartedly accept and implement otherwise you're going to be um, otherwise things just will get very confusing for you okay so I feel like that relationship has ended and I feel that you're shifting into something new so a lot of you might have recently you know uh, gone through a divorce gone through a separation and now you're on your own starting a new job starting building up your social circle so I see you building up your own foundation on your own but you're a lot happier you're a lot more productive constructive and emotionally healthy so that's I feel like it's overall very very good for you okay if you had financial concerns within the past like 10 months and this is like way into uh, 2015 I definitely feel your financial foundation being rebuilt I definitely see it being built on something stable and I feel like a lot of you might have started a new job as well within the past three months um, which is bringing in this boost of confidence is bringing in a new social circle as well that's going to be very good for you I do feel that the main theme is to be mindful about um, to be mindful about um, just being on your own and, and f doing you first rather than, you know, constantly worrying about what other people are, if other people need help, if you want to be a team player, I feel like it's important for you to take care of your own needs, your own responsibilities first, because um, you might not be in the best position to help people if you're just starting out, right? So that's what I'm sensing for you um, when it comes to communication as well. Be very, very honest and be very, very truthful. What I'm also seeing is um, for those of you who are single trying to date new people, we do have an air sign. We do have an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. You want to be a little bit careful and don't jump the gun. I feel like you're rushing into a situation and the other person, they're, they're not a bad person, but they are still recoiling from a relationship in their recent past that hasn't been cleared out of their vicinity yet okay so don't jump the gun and don't um, expect too much from this air sign if they're telling you you know I'm not really looking for a relationship I feel that they are serious about it and they're really not looking at least at this point okay so be mindful about that so I wish you the best Pisces take care of yourself and um, I will talk to you in June bye bye